Before we introduce our esteemed, amazing guest, I have to regale him with a story that just occurred at my household. So uh, it's a little background required, but we put out some. We put out a box of candy bars for all the delivery people in the month of December, and uh, I had the dog tied up out front. And at one point, she got into it, and I had to call the vet. Like, we were freaked out. Like, I thought she ate. Because, like, seven candy bars were missing. This is important information. I called the vet. They were like, uh, it's probably okay at her weight because it's not dark chocolate, but just keep an eye on her. She was fine. Uh, I only found one wrapper, though. So I was, like, racking my brain trying to figure out, did she eat all the wrappers or whatever? Well, today, I left her out there again this morning, and I come back. Um, I don't know. She was out there for half an hour. And I come back, and uh, there's an unopened, disgustingly dirty bag of peanut butter M&Ms. No, peanut M&Ms on the porch. Like some kind of offering. Like she was trying to bribe me to let her back in the house. <laughs> she didn't eat the candy bars. She buried them in the yard <laughs> and dug up this bag of M&Ms wholly intact. And I went out there and started kicking dirt piles apart in the, uh, in the flower bed. And I found another fully intact bag of regular m and m so <laughs> my wife was like we're gonna have candy trees like they yeah. buried a you basically have a candy bar yard. scavenger hunt in your backyard permanently now it's good like luck <laughs> yeah great thanks starbucks so that was my morning uh oh. so yeah how was your morning oh wonderful um After. you know just eh, normal business stuff uh Working so for our um uh, our viewers and listeners sorry i'm taking the floor from you ben uh, we sure, actually have sure. Ben from Moto Camp Nerd here as our guest today. We're going to be interrogating him slightly about the wonderful business he's created and also just sharing many, many stories we all have about camping and motorcycles and the like. But Ben, we're so glad you're here. Welcome to the Internet Writing Buddies podcast. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. You are most welcome. We had to get Dork. the most expert on uh, motorcycle yeah. camping. And also, you know... They say one good Ben deserves another. So now we have one. I mean, we can now we have another. one. Yeah. <laughs> also, I think if everybody's okay with this, um, I am going to refer to uh, Ben number one as dork and Ben number two as Ben, if that is okay. Why is it not dork and nerd? Ooh, actually, let's do that. Dork and nerd. I like it. And Grace. That's going to be good. And Grace. Yeah, we can, we can roll with that. That'll work. <laughs> All right. Perfect. I like this. <laughs> okay. Well, Ben, uh, why don't you tell people, I'm sure you have an elevator speech version of what your business is. So why don't you give us that so that people have a little bit of background on what we're talking about and who the hell you are? Um, yeah, I've given the elevator speech so many times. Uh, I'm, you know me, I'm not the salesman kind of guy, right? So I'm just kind of, yeah, this is how we did it. There it is in a nutshell. Uh, so really, uh, we started... Moto Camp Nerd because of the lack of resources for motorcycle campers trying to find everything and all the small camping gear and all that good stuff, right? So uh, I know whenever over the years of me motorcycle camping, it was always jumping from one website to the other, trying to figure out the specs and details of every piece of camping gear. So we have curated all of the camping gear that we know or that like you ambassadors have worked with and and used and given us information on so that way we can put it all in one place to make it really easy for motorcycle campers to figure out you know what works best for them and the store is motocampnerd.com by the way i'm not sure if we said that did we say that i don't know if we said that no i just said that no. so Nailed I don't it. think we did. So there you, you get go. Paid and five dollars also... every time I say motocampnerd.com, motocampnerd.com. Uh, just like Honda pays you, right? Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yes, much. but if you have not already been to the website, Moto Camp Nerd has some of the like best uh, selection of motorcycle camping gear. It's kind of like the Revzilla of the aspect of camping. I think especially if you are um, doing a lot of it frequently. It's high quality gear that's very durable. And that's super important when you're on the bike all the time. And Ben and I both know that. So we're both huge fans and uh, really swear by everything you have built, uh, nerd. We appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, and I have to say the name is appropriate and I'm glad because one thing I love about you and your stuff that you put together is like, you really geek out on like the specs and stuff. Like you just posted a video about why isobutane doesn't work when it's cold. And like, 
I was like, what's the difference between this one, this Echo Park bag and this Diamond Park bag? And it's like a two page document appeared in my inbox about like <laughs> synthetic insulation. It's like all this stuff that I don't think about and I don't want to think about, honestly. Um, but you not only like do it as part of your business, but you seem to really care about and understand it. And so that's why you're such a good resource and why um, it's it's great to have the site that's like super curated and just know that if I don't want to think about specs and crap, if I get it from you, it's probably good. Yeah, yeah, we we've tried to to put the main specs like people care about the weight, the pack size, the dimensions, you know, all that up front, and so that way people can see it because that's usually the first thing people want to know about whenever they're looking for a bag or pad or whatever. And then of course it gets into all the nitty gritty stuff because there are others like me out there who are you know really really detail oriented, and I mean even you you go through and you research it's like it's like researching a bike right. You know, whenever you're trying to buy a bike and buying camping gear is very similar because you're researching the tool for the job. And so you want to know all the details and all the specs because you don't want to get down the road and figure out, oh, well, this maintenance interval isn't what I wanted for this bike. Same thing for camping gear. You know, oh, I didn't realize that uh, this tent didn't have taped seams or, or seam sealed. So I have to do it myself. And you find out when you're in the middle of a rainstorm. So, you know, all the little details, all the the material specs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, we really like to, or at least I like to dig into it. <laughs> well, so I guess uh, for anybody that's either just getting into motorcycle camping or is really trying to narrow down what they use, what do you think are like the top five things from a camping perspective that you would recommend for somebody um, just off the top of your head to have on hand kind of at all times when you're doing an ADV camping weekend or whatever else? Um, I mean, starting from the ground up, literally from the ground up is your sleep system. So you've got to have a, you know, I always kind of get people to bend more towards spending more money on the sleeping pad more than anything else, because it's literally how you're going to sleep at night. So a good sleeping pad, uh, a good sleeping bag. Um, don't worry about the weight and the size, like sacrifice it and get the pillow. Like there's no reason you shouldn't have a pillow with the technology in this day and age. Like it packs small enough. It's not a big deal. So get a pillow, um, the shelter, you know, whatever shelter you want to run with. That's the kind of like the core essentials, right? To actually go camping and get outside. Uh, beyond that, uh, I always tell everybody, even on day rides, water, snacks, um, a light, and if you can't self-rescue, make sure you've got a either um, like a Garmin, like a satellite messenger, or you have good signal where you're going with your phone. Um, but then beyond that, like if you're going to self-rescue, then it goes into all the tools and parts and pieces you need to be able to get in and get out of wherever you're going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did I miss anything? <laughs> Oh, I just, uh, I'm, I'm actually really due for some, uh, newer stuff. I've been using the same camp kit. Uh, you're going to probably cry when I tell you this for, I think 11 years. Um, so my, uh, it, yeah, works. <laughs> it has, really um, this was the first year though, that, um, I started to realize that the down in my sleeping bag has about run its course, especially when we were camping in the very cold Yukon, uh, evening. Uh, it was just a lot. So yes, I think the sleep system is definitely the most important part because if you also have a sleep pad, that's constantly deflating and keeping you up at night, you're not going to ride well the next day. You're not going to be doing well when you're out trying to adventure. So it's super important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what I see a stat the other day, like getting six hours of sleep or five hours of sleep is, is the same as, uh, as, being drunk like if you get on or start driving yeah if you're, you're well, essentially driving drunk that's that bad. came up in yeah. our our gatekeeping episode <laughs> yeah. too ben because we were talking about all these people that are like oh yeah you gotta rough it so hard right like four hours of sleep whatever else and, and the idea of doing four hours of sleep and then riding a 12-hour motorcycle day is a nightmare yeah. and you don't yeah. ride well you ride like shit and mm -hmm. i don't understand why that like push of type two fun is such a hardcore thing it's stupid to be honest it's very stupid and dangerous yeah i mean i agree that there's i think there's people who are uh adrenaline junkies and thrill seekers and and it may be that they can thrive off of that but that's also not for everyone you know and yeah. i think everybody's entitled to do whatever they want it's their own way of doing things um especially because i know a lot of veterans who are really hardcore 
trying to seek that adrenaline that they had, you know, coming out of the military. So, you know, yeah. I know a few of them that are kind of like that, that are like, you know, four hours of sleep, you sleep under the, uh, uh, just a tarp. And, you know, if you get wet, so be it. <laughs> yeah. Which all power to anybody who wants to do that, but I'd rather enjoy my motorcycle ride the next day than be suffering and over caffeinating as a result of that. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'd say, well, my first motorcycle camping trip, I actually uh, low sided my bike. And oh, really? so looking back on that now, I had some, I mean, not the greatest gear, but I know I was cold. I know I was yeah. wet and I know I didn't have a pillow. So um, not blaming that on me low siding, but you know, there's something to say about that whole weekend that I did not sleep well and that I was tired the whole time, even though it wasn't a great experience and I loved the whole, you know, trip. It was just definitely the sleep and riding go hand in hand. Yeah. Ben, what was your first moto camp trip? Hmm. Sorry, dork. What was yours? (laughs) I have a video. I have a video. Uh, Of the first, first one? It's funny though, because I, uh, only recorded the writing and like almost none of the camping so it's like a really boring video but i just <laughs> threw a bunch of crap on my versus 650 and went uh yeah i camped at clear lake and i was like that's t- like two hours from home it was the farthest i'd ever gone camped and i just it was a walmart tent with a cargo net on the back of the versus and you know everybody starts somewhere that's i love when people are like you know think i'm suggesting you have to buy some of the gear that i have to camp because I didn't start that way, but you know, when it's raining and stuff, it sure is nice to have the nicer gear. I didn't sleep great on my fourteen dollars sleeping pad, um, you know, whatever. No, but I don't uh, think anybody would. But yeah, it was clear so... that was I think my first real motorcycle camping trip was uh was on the channel because I didn't start. I mean, I started the channel six or seven months after I started riding, so right, it's all there. Yeah. Yeah. My first motorcycle camping was in Iceland. So it was like jumping into the deep end of the pool head oh first. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, thankfully had decent enough gear that even though it rained and was crazy windy, cause Iceland is one of the windiest places on earth. Um, it, it actually held up and it was great, but you definitely learn a lot very quickly about what you need and don't need on those trips. And I don't think we were super well equipped, but you can kind of make do sometimes. So, yeah. Yeah. Huddle in a giant ball for warmth. Pretty much. <laughs> Just yeah. a big pile <laughs> of people. Yeah. Yeah. So you I, know, and I, I do want to pick you your brain know. about motorcycle camping, but I want to talk about the store a little bit before we jump into like most of the advice thing, just because I want, I want to ask you, what's your ultimate vision for this store? What, where, where do you, where do you want it to go? Where do you want it to be? in the future um well (laughs) there's a lot of different directions now uh the one that i've been aiming for is sort of that revzilla style bigger store where it is a true one-stop shop that we have plenty of gear um pretty much where we're competing with rei and backcountry and all the other big box online stores in this segment for, you know, specifically for motorcycle campers, because that's what we're going to cater to. But I know it also kind of works alongside of like backpackers and, and, and backpackers and everything else. But having a large enough store that we have, you know, motorcycle riders employed and running every aspect of the business, working with us hand in hand and being able to feed that into the community and just grow it for, I mean, we've, we spitball different, like, nonprofit organizations for helping kids get into motorcycle riding. My nephew's four years old and we're getting him into like the little um, PW 50 dirt bike. So like, and being able to have, you know, access for kids who don't have the ability to get into that kind of stuff, but that's like way out there kind of thing. You know, we're still, it's just me and Mary here at the store and I still work a full-time job. So um, a lot of things can happen between now and then. So what is your what does your day look like right now? <laughs> um, you know what you said about the six hours of sleep, you know? Uh, uh yeah. drunk all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm drunk all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh so actually this year I throttled back a little bit just because I was dragging, I was wearing myself out. Um 
typically I wake up around 7.30, 8 o'clock, come to the store by 9, pack orders, and then just do everything for the business. Um, Mary does most of the inventory and purchasing and, and kind of merchandising the store part of it, where I'm doing everything on the back end as far as marketing, bills, uh, working with ambassadors, working with just any and every outlet possible, you know, to help get our name out there. And so uh, we're here till 2 p.m. And then I have to go home, change, eat lunch, and then go to my other job from 3 p.m. to midnight, one o'clock in the morning on second shift, and then wake up and do it all again. Uh, I say I cut back this year because I was setting an alarm for like 6, 30, 7 a.m. every morning and doing it. And so I was only getting like five to six hours of sleep. So now I've kind of got it where I'm like six to seven, depending hours of sleep, just because I could, I could tell I was getting wore down and it wasn't, it wasn't a good thing. So I had to, I had to throttle back. Yeah. And then weekends, you were at the store on the weekends too? No, actually, um, kind of, I guess one of the things to put towards the, uh, the checkbox for Envision, you know, for future expansion is me and Mary have both worked retail. And so we don't like to work the weekends because we know how that is. Cause you know, you're having to work the weekend at a retail store where all your friends are out riding and camping. So we've made it a dedication that we will only work at, you know, at most one weekend a month. And if we can squeeze it in there, um, sometimes it's just Saturday, but we'll work one weekend a month. We'll do that until, you know, as far as we own the business and plan to ever do it for all of our employees. And then, um, and we that way we can go out and enjoy riding and camping and and doing all the events. And plus, we got to do stuff at the house too. I mean, there's all the personal stuff we got to take care of: cars, yeah. house, <laughs> yeah, everything in between. Everything I don't get to during the week. Yeah. Right. You need some time to live your life, I suppose. Yeah. I, I guess. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm here most of the time anyway. <laughs> yeah. It becomes a very long list. I know I'm still currently there myself where I'm working two jobs. And um, Ben, I know you've been there as well, too, when you were really getting the YouTube channel rolling. It's something you can definitely do for a while, but it's not sustainable, like long, long term. You know, once you start to see the permanent bags under your eyes and (laughs) and everything else, I think that's the clear sign of, okay, maybe um, just dialing it back a touch is very healthy for a lot of reasons so yeah burnout is real (laughs) it is yeah very real yeah okay i want to ask you two product questions and then we can let's talk about moto camping but uh one what is the best selling item in your store what do you sell the most of the best selling item by accident it was the diamond park sleeping bags by accident by accident yeah Yeah, why by accident explain that so we didn't think it was going to be a good seller when I got it because it does pack a little bit bigger than what people typically want for a really small packing sleeping bag. Yeah. Uh, but it's still relatively small compared to like a Coleman Walmart style synthetic bag. And a hell of a um, lot better in the same. Size <laughs> packing. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, the concept was cool. I hadn't used it before. It was like, Oh, it attaches to the pad. It's got zips on both sides. This is going to be great for people who want a bed away from home because you're not having to turn with the bag. You can literally alligator death roll inside of the sleeping bag and not get tangled up. I mean, alligator death roll. Oh my God. <laughs> so that from a customer. One of them sent that in an email. I'm like, I've been saying barrel roll, but this is way better. So, it's way better. Yeah. I'm going to add that to my vocabulary. Yes. I'm in. <laughs> Yep. So, uh, so it just, well, and then of course the help of, uh, Dork and Roy doing a video and I didn't just, do that on purpose. I mean, just, I wasn't trying to promote myself there. I didn't know that was what you were going to say. Sorry. No, actually, even at like, when we go to rallies and shows and stuff, it's just the one that people gravitate towards. And yeah. even people who come in for quilts, they're like, yeah, everybody I know uses a quilt. I want a quilt because it's way smaller and lighter and then they realize that the foot bo- the foot box is a little bit tighter, and then you have the 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 elastic bands you have to attach to the pad, and it's just an extra little inconvenience. And so 
it's one of those bags that's really high on the convenience factor. It's really high on the com comfort factor. And so it just, yeah, I just started selling like crazy. <laughs> that totally <laughs> sounded like I set myself up. I did not know he was going to say that. Oh, so what's your best seller? Oh, the thing I recommended. Yeah. Ben, ben we all know you're setting yourself up here. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that to throw that out there. It was pretty yeah. funny. Well, yeah. My other question is what product gets returned the most? Ooh, that's a great question too. Interesting. So before I answer, I will have to say one of the main reasons when we started the store and we aimed for all the high quality stuff was because one, we wanted people to make sure that they were getting out and comfortably camping and having a good time camping without failure of products. And then two was because those quality products means they're less likely to get returned and it's less I have to deal with on my side, especially when I'm working two jobs. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know what our return percentage rate right now is. It's like less than 1%. That's um, amazing. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. So the most returned item, man, I have to think about this for a second. It's usually... I'd say the most returned is the sleeping pads because they're pairing it with the diamond park. And if you get like a 20 inch wide pad, it, it still fits, but it's not great. You need to get like a 25 or a 30 inch wide sleeping pad to pair with it. Yeah. So we have a lot of exchanges for the sizes. Um, and then the product that we have that was returned just because it was a total flop would probably be the X ped, um uh, oh i don't even know what it's called it's like a little cotton sheet like the x-ped sheet for the sleeping pads and it's just got elastic in four corners and it stretches over the pad and we got a lot of those returned and i don't know if just people didn't like it didn't know what you know i didn't get a lot of feedback on it so we've actually dropped that item from our store yeah. and uh probably won't carry it anymore yeah uh, that crazy. really low return rate. I mean, that's got to make you guys feel good because obviously you're doing a very good job of selecting the right products for, you know, adventure camping in general, if it's that low. I mean, that's incredible. Very cool. Yeah. Well, and I try to make sure we get as much details up front and I'm learning more too, right? The more customers that buy and return and I learn what people are tell telling us about what they see on the website. So trying to get that information up front first yeah. so people don't have those issues where oh i bought the wrong size pad i need to return it because it's not in it's not just an inconvenience for us it's an inconvenience for the customer yeah. and our we have a really really high customer satisfaction like goal like it has to be we have a standard you know we like i said we both worked retail we know what realistically it should be and so yeah. um yeah anything we can make the process as smooth and easy as possible is what we're here for and to oh, Ben's yeah. credit i've seen him and i've i've been lucky enough to been working with him since the, close to the beginning i think the store yeah, yeah pretty much launched. um and i've seen him multiple times pull a product that that we i use somebody use that just wasn't it wasn't measuring up uh and it's just it's just not on the store anymore because that's not what they're about regardless of how much it might have made him yeah absolutely yeah if there's a high failure rate um yeah we'll just we'll pull it and we won't we won't sell it again okay well that's enough ben's patting each other on the back grace let's <laughs> talk about motorcycle camping um actually i one of the, i pitched this to uh dork ben earlier but i thought it'd be fun um nerd ben if you have a favorite motorcycle camping story you want to tell and I would want to emphasize not only favorite, but funny and or entertaining or everything went wrong or you had a face off with the trash panda, something like that. Um, anything along those lines, just because I think these tend to be super entertaining, especially when you have people have been doing this for as long as we have. You know, I'm really terrible at uh, remembering stories on the spot. So I'm gonna have to think about it and get back to All you because right. I really don't remember like off to rack my brain on that one and get grace back. go first and it'll jar something for him she just Probably, this all yeah. is set up for her to tell her story so no it's not I i'm kidding saying, i'm just messing with you, you not everybody one, tries right? to set themselves up like you do yeah, then. I, well, That's i'm just, just trying to shift the things. blame <laughs> off of me i know i know 
Ben's the star of the show, in case you didn't know that, nerd Ben. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, no, one of my favorite camping stories is uh, I have apparently uh, a history with raccoons. They are always in my camp, even though I do put my food up in the tree for bears, for everything else. Um, I don't really know what it is, but they're always in my camp. So I was actually camping in Tofino, which is on the Western side of Vancouver Island in 2022 and woke up in the middle of the night, was actually in a very big camping area with a whole bunch of other people. It's a beautiful spot on the coast, but I woke up and went to the bathroom and came back. And when I came back, there is a raccoon the size of my golden retriever on top of our picnic table. And he had eaten, he literally had crawled into the tree. He hadn't torn anything, by the way. He carefully opened up everything, didn't tear a bag, didn't do any damage to anything, managed to get in, ate all of the food we had, opened everything, opposable thumbs. Like, and by the time I got there, I just had like, I was just, all I could do was just stand there and hiss at it to get it to go away because it was enormous and it was terrifying. And so after like a, I don't know, 45 to 60 second standoff, it finally decided that obviously all the food was gone. So it was off to the next campsite, but cut to the next morning. I mean, I wake up, I go to the bathroom and there's a group of women in the bathroom and they're all talking about how they had face-offs with this raccoon the night before. And there is nothing funnier than realizing that like this huge raccoon was just clearly like the camp troll. Like it literally just went around and was constantly raiding everybody's campsites and clearly had the skill set to do so. But I just, it was absolutely hilarious. I've never seen anything like it. Um, I've also never seen a raccoon that big since. I probably never will again. It was enormous, probably 45 to 50 pounds at least not joking it's so. his world you're just living in it exactly <laughs> just feeding him away yeah this is my camp brown yeah ben what you got Do it, does it have to be a raccoon story no i took the raccoon story i mean i have one from camping at silver creek falls in the they're so used to people like it was just coming right up to me and i was just like talking to it like a person like raccoon hey what are you doing raccoon that's all on video so you can watch it if you want to see it but um i don't know the first thing that leapt to mind was the time everyone tricked me into drinking all the beer and uh we were all camping out at detroit lake and somebody came back with it it was mclovin came back with a 12 pack and i was just drinking hanging out we were making hot where i was making uh not hot dog sausages whatever and at one point, I go back to the twelve pack and I pull out the second to last beer, and I'm like, "Does anybody else want this beer?" Uh, you know, before I jump in, and they're like, "No, none of us have had any." And I was like, "What are you talking about? No, nobody's had any. We drank a twelve pack." And they're like, "No, you drank a twelve pack," and they all were just like, they all just like silently agreed to like not have any. It's to not like I go. was like, "You can't have this beer." I think they all just sort of looked at each other and realized it would be super funny to see how far and how long. It takes him to realize and uh there's eight minutes of footage from that video that got cut out for public consumption uh, <laughs> but it did make it to the channel members and patrons but that was the night nathan tried to start the fire with his exhaust from his 500 exef and it was uh and it was like in november so it was cold <laughs> whatever i it's their fault uh, it's not my fault it's uh it's all travis and nathan and you were, you were totally that tricked that into drinking beer yeah, they tricked yeah. me so tricky. Trick yeah. Yeah. I'm responsible. I'm an adult. <laughs> I'm a grown up. All right. Nerd well, Ben, do you have anything? Man, I don't have anything that can top like comedic stories like that. Like I don't have any. I mean, so the, the two that popped in my head while you guys were talking was um one time went camping. Uh there's a motorcycle campground we're, we're blessed with them here in the southeast they're all over the appalachian you know mountain chain uh in the tennessee up into virginia so they're specialized for motorcycle you know use only that's nice. uh, which is really convenient it's like um festival style camping you just usually have a field you go out there you pitch a tent you're good to go so one of these campgrounds we were at uh they have a nice picnic shelter area for events and stuff. And we were just hanging out under there cooking and eating. And it was piss pouring rain all night long. And I had my 
cheap Walmart tent. And so I went to go out and get into my Walmart tent and I had set it up, you know, early years of moto camping, I had set it up in, you know, a nice little low area. And so it was just a puddle. It was floating and I had staked it down. So it wasn't going anywhere. Uh, so I just grabbed my bag and everything out of it and then just went and slept on the concrete on <laughs> in this little gazebo well everybody else is still like they're up drinking and, and eating and cooking all night and i just curled up underneath of a picnic table and just kind of wedged myself in there with a sleeping bag and with the sleep and uh uh yeah so that was that was one of the highlight ones that i could remember <laughs> um food wise because you brought that up was we stayed at Dalton park which is off the blue ridge parkway and when we got there, I had reserved a couple of sites that I thought were nice in the area. And we got there and they're like, oh, well, you're on a motorcycle. We make people with motorcycles and backpackers and bike campers like you have to stay at these sites because they have a bear box. But I've got a hard case on the back. At the time I had the, the Triumph Bonneville. So I had it yeah. the hard case with all my food. And I'm like, well, I'll just put it in this. It'll be fine. It's like, no, no, no. You have to stay at this spot. And I'm like, whatever. OK, fine. We'll do it. So we got up there. It's on the top of a hill and we put all of our food in the bear box. And so one being at the top of the hill is all the wind kind of comes up to the top of the yeah. hill. And so it was overly windy all night long, um, along with the trees up above. I didn't really check them. And so it got really super windy that night. I'm like paranoid that the branches are going to fall down on us. We get up in the morning and we start pulling our food out and it was like in the 50s 60s that night this bear box had like superheated all of the food i guess it was like the thermal energy from the earth had just come through this one little portal of the bear box and so we had pork we had chicken we had steak we had eggs everything was thawed out all the ice had melted it was in a cooler um and so we literally cooked every everything like all the meat all the vegetables all the eggs everything we had for two days we just cooked it for breakfast and and had a, a smorgasbord and uh that's yeah. crazy wow so like yeah if you have to use a bear box just yeah. uh be warned that there's some sort of weird thermal energy going on in those yeah it's basically a microwave out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> yeah right, right. yeah well, okay let's pick his brain i want to pick his brain okay he's a genius expert let's pick his brain all right pick away okay ben what is the biggest misconception that new motorcycle campers come in with? Man, there's so many. <laughs> what is a common misconception? <laughs> um, so true. One of, most, yeah. <laughs> one of the most common ones I hear is that you have to be uncomfortable and camping is supposed to be cheap. Yeah. Um, which both kind of go hand in hand saying camping is what you make of it, which, you know, I think, well, you guys preach that and I do as well. Like you do you. And so if you wanted to be uncomfortable camping, you'd be uncomfortable, you know, you can just go with a bag and a, a tarp if you want and nothing else. Like we talked about earlier, you know? Um, yeah. But then that it's supposed to be cheap because some people are like, oh yeah, camping is a cheap way of, of staying places. And it can be, you can get cheap gear from Walmart or uh, Amazon or wherever else. But, you know, I tell people there's, it's the tools that you have to do the job, right? If you buy a cheap right. tool, it's only going to last so long. Um, you know, and if, if you want high quality stuff, you know, you, you just have to pay a little bit more. You get what you pay for. Yeah, I did That's make a Venn diagram at one point and it had, what was it, like cheap quality gear and reliable and like small packing. And in the middle, it's it's nope. You you can't have all three. Yeah. You can only pick two. Uh, same with the, the, the uh, what's the saying? Fast, cheap and reliable. You know, you can only pick two. Same yeah. kind of concept. I think that's a misconception that is so prevalent in like a lot of things with all gear with adventure riding, whether it's camping gear, whether it's actual like protective riding gear, whether it's luggage, et cetera. Like there's a lot of people that I think, obviously if you're just starting out, you don't always have the funds or the capacity to pay for all this expensive stuff right away. You can cheap out, but long-term investment, like it is going to cost and be a little expensive, but that's because you need to have the quality things so that 
you know, obviously you can be comfortable, but also safe. Uh, and that is something I know people that are just starting to get into adventure riding, it's kind of a shock at first at how expensive sometimes even a tent is, but that's because that tent is meant to last through torrential downpours, high winds and extreme cold. And you don't appreciate that really until you're in a situation when you need it. And that's especially true for gear, right? Like, I don't think you ever really truly appreciate the gear on your body until you're in a bad wreck and you're like, oh shit, if I didn't have this on, I would have broken this or I would have, you know, whatever else. So it's just, it's kind of just, I think a part of adventure motorcycle riding that can be really tough, but it is definitely something that, um, we all just kind of have to grin and bear it a little bit just to be safe, to be comfortable if you want to be. Um, and also just to have a better overall experience. Right, the oh, yeah. camping is cheap, but yeah, getting gear to do it is not, but you amortize yeah. that out over how many trips. Yeah. Right. And your more expensive gear lasts longer and is therefore cheaper in the long run. But it's awful hard to swallow that when you're looking at a five hundred dollar tent. Yes. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. But and well, and we have like the you know, we stock mostly the bike pack tents from Nemo and Big Agnes because that's kind of our motto. It's pack small, camp easy. So we're we're sticking to that. And so a lot of those tents are five, six hundred dollars. And I tell people, it's like, look, you don't have to have this tent to go cross country like this tent is made for people who are camping literally 25 days a month. You know, if they're living out of it essentially, or they're, tra or they're traveling cross country, you know, two or three times a year and they're sleeping out of it for two or three weeks at a time. Like right. you want that quality with a lot of travel, but if you're only going one weekend a year, then please do not spend that extra money on the tent, you know, spend the yeah. money on, like I said, a sleep system at least. So that way you've got it, but you don't have to spend all the money off up front. I mean, my initial sleep system for camping for my first motorcycle camping trip for the first few years, actually, it was a Ozark trails tent. It was the junior scout tent because I'm five foot five and I can sleep in it diagonally <laughs> <laughs> without touching the sides. <laughs> Um, and then those really thick, uh, dense foam mats, um, uh, that's like $10 from Walmart, yeah. some Ozark trail, really cheap, uh, sleeping bag that I could find. I just packed the smallest. I had no pillow again. The first time I finally got a pillow, you know, we established that pillows are a must. Uh, and then yeah. I made a stove from, uh, the tin cans, you know, the little tin can penny stove or the alcohol stove. And then just went and bought a bunch of denatured alcohol and played with it at the house and figured it out. And it's like, okay, this is how I'm going to cook meals, you know? And, and so I just went as cheap as I possibly could because I was broke at the time. So that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. I think what's the, there's a really popular meme that travels around occasionally that's, um, adventure motorcycle camping is the most expensive way to live like a homeless person. Isn't that <laughs> something that travels around a lot? Yeah, yes, absolutely. But I think we all like, I think if you do truly fall in love with it, right. Like you're saying, like you do find ways to make it happen. Um, you know, if you're only going camping once or twice a year, yeah, of course you don't need to make it that big of an expense, but I think the investment is worth it. If you're somebody like Ben dork, Ben or myself or you, when you're doing it all the time and it's what you really love to do, it's just worth investing in your comfort um, and, and long-term just keeping in mind that it is something you are going to be consistently using all the time. Yeah. Ben, did you have any more brain picking questions over there? Uh, I have a great wrap up question. So is there anything you want to throw in before we do that? Um, is there anything I want to throw in? Um, Ben, is there anything you want to throw in? What do we, what do people need to know, man? um we're the one-stop shop for motorcycle camping we're the only online actually i think we're the only motorcycle camping store dedicated to motorcycle riders and campers i heard that um, in video some guy was camping and he said that <laughs> i wonder which video that could have been uh, <clears throat> we we still are the only motorcycle <laughs> dedicated motorcycle camping store um you know seriously we, we put all of our motorcycle camping is the one thing we focus on more than anything at all. Like, yeah. Um, I thought about it a couple of years ago 
like if this was going to go grow too slow because I wasn't sure how big the segment was and how fast we were going to grow right and I kind of contemplated okay well maybe we'll look into like car camping as well and expanding out but it's not really what I was passionate about so we didn't so we just kind of stuck to our guns and just kept with the the theme of small packing gear for making camping easy and so far we're we're almost there like literally hopefully 2024 spring i am able to quit my other job and do this full time so um hopefully hopefully we can get there hell yeah um okay i i have one final question what do you love about motorcycle camping Right now, motorcycle camping is my zen. It is the way I disconnect, which is why I am terrible at making videos or posting anything about us motorcycle camping because I work so much that when we go camping, it is my way to completely disengage. Um, it's the one time I pretty much forget about my phone and leave it off to the side. Um, yeah. And Mary is actually better at taking pictures than I am because she remembers, hey, we do have a business. We need to take some pictures and she'll take pictures of me and like what we're doing. Uh, but yeah, I completely just zone out and I'm in the moment. We really like to cook at camp. So it's again, it's kind of therapeutic and Zen for us. And so we like to make a nice meal. If you've seen, you know, Amanda Zitto and her show and her, or her episodes where she's making a lot of food at camp, like elaborate meals is what we're doing at camp so yeah uh, but that's just the fun stuff and then we like to go hiking and and riding in the areas and sometimes we'll set up a base camp sometimes we'll ride from one place to the other uh, but yeah it's just our right now for us it's a getaway and it's the the zen for me originally when it started it was kind of the same thing because I was working a lot and it was just one of those you know um yeah the borderline of a, uh, was it escapism versus, um, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. I do. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think I can even speak for, I know I can speak for Ben on this, which is obviously when we are doing a lot of it, <laughs> don't look at me like that. <laughs> um, but, uh, I do know that like, obviously with a lot of the filming he and I do, that is a big piece of us being out in the field and whatever else, but the best part I think for me about camping is the minute the cameras get turned off because the minute that we're done filming at any capacity, that is the Zen place because it's just most of the time you're out of reception. Most of the time you're away from all the tech, all the craziness and um, the busyness of day-to-day -day life. And there's nothing better than just being out in the wilderness and finding some calm, quiet, have a good meal, have a nice sleep under the stars. I mean, it's, there's just nothing like it. And I think that's why we all love this so much. It's just, there's nothing better. There really isn't. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how quickly you guys reset, but I know like a two to three day weekend, just camping, I'll come yeah. back and I'm like, man, I feel like a whole new person. I'm ready to go. Let's, you know, let's hit the ground. We're going back to work. Let's hit the ground running and let's do it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, right, a very common comment question I get um, on my channel, and you know, I, I have a lot of new and interested in being new uh, adventure motorcycle riders, dual sport riders, and campers. Um, that's sort of my thing, and I'm, I'm very happy and I'm proud to say that a lot of those people find their way into my channel. And a very common comment is, "I really want to go camping. I really want to try this thing, but I'm just..." I'm, I'm afraid I don't know how to get started. So what advice would you offer to someone who has the desire, but just hasn't either found the motivation or the courage or whatever it is they need to make the leap and go out and just do it? So if you're solo, I always tell people to get what gear, you know, do your research, get what gear you need and just sleep in the backyard because a lot of people, and I'll say, including myself, um, I'm overstimulated with all the sounds and get overly paranoid. And so <laughs> not me ever. <laughs> and so yeah. going out in the woods for, you know, if you're out in a campground and you're just wide open, it can be intimidating and, and somewhat nerve wracking for your first time because, you know, um, the, the Dalton Park where we were at with the, the bear boxes they were like, oh yeah, there's bears that are active in this area. And so the wind was really blowing that night. So every time I heard a branch cracking in the tree, I'm like, oh, is that the bear coming by? Like, and I'm like, it was, it wasn't like I was overly paranoid and freaking out 
to the point where I couldn't sleep, but it was enough to keep me from, you know, getting good sleep. Yeah. Um, and then, well, too, I had my flashlight and like every time I hear something, I'd shine it out in the woods. So even I have those moments where I'm paranoid and like looking out like, wait a minute, where is it? Like, I know it's here. Where is it? <laughs> um, so, yeah, just starting slow, you know, go out into the like, keep it really, really simple where you sleep in the backyard for a night and then find somewhere local near you. There's probably some kind of state park or something that has a campground and go start with front country camping where you're at like either a KOA or a private campground or like a public campground or park or, you know, state sponsored, whatever, and go out there where you have resources and just plan on sleeping. Don't plan on doing a lot of cooking or anything else like that, because you kind of ease into it that way. Take your snacks and your water and stuff, but don't, don't worry about all the food and all the, the gear you need besides your sleep system and your shelter. Um, and then that's just a good way to get into it, to figure out one, if you actually are going to like it two if you're going to be overly paranoid and three kind of gives you a good baseline on where you want to go with it, because there are a lot of people who don't know if they want to camp to ride or ride to camp. And so that kind of helps establish, okay, do I like to ride more or do I like to camp because I like to enjoy the outdoors more? And yeah, and that's like a good starting point that I usually tell everybody. Does that answer the question? Bro. Solid, bro. Spoken like a true expert who's answered <laughs> this question a few times. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah. We're so thankful to you for coming on and yeah. And giving us your time. And you know, I've on a personal note, I've been incredibly grateful for our partnership. And it's been really great to work with you these past few years and really honestly watch my channel grow at the same time. Like we have this kind of parallel path. I feel like um, and it's been cool to kind of walk that together and discuss the many fun challenges of running your own business and you know, all the back door, back door, back end. Mm, this sounds the same. Mm. All mm. the stuff in the background that, you know, you don't think about, like starting LLCs and all the business stuff. So um, I just again, I just want to say publicly that it's it's been great to work with you. And I love it's great to be able to support companies that are run by people that I enjoy and that I believe in. And so um, I just you're awesome that's my whole thing Back thanks in. man you're awesome too no I, it's really cool that is like you said we've paralleled like together have grown our our technically our businesses right and and just seeing how it's grown so far and i think we both play off of each other too because like if you get into a slump or i get into a slump usually one of us is doing something to kind of like push the other one in some way shape or form even though we don't know it necessarily yeah. like there's always some kind of like something in the background that just happens and you come to me with something and it's like, Oh man, it lights a fire under my ass. And I'm like, all right, yeah, we can do it. And yeah, we both have this ridiculous un un unearned, unbelievable confidence in the other person. Yes, absolutely. That's the word I was looking for. It's camaraderie. That's the best way to do something like this. When you're trying to continue growing and expanding, when you have somebody that you feel like is in it with you and in the trenches with you, it just makes it that much more, not only of a fun experience, but you feel like, like you guys were talking about at those moments where things do kind of taper off a bit or struggle a little bit, you have somebody to kind of pick you back up and walk with you. It's, it's cool. It's very cool to see, honestly, how much both obviously both the bends have grown in such a short period of time um it's just uh it's very cool to be a part of it and i'm happy to be here well that's why i'm glad you're here or well, i'm glad you're here i don't know about dork is or uh, uh, he's never happy i'm here he likes to be in the spotlight <laughs> I s whatever Either i do subconsciously or you know I hate when you say that and you keep saying it because it makes me feel weird. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't expect this to get so sentimental, but I'm glad it did. Um, but we are grateful to have yeah. had you on the podcast and look forward to interacting with you many, many times to come in the future. I'm not words in good. Grace, quick, start the sign off. Uh, ben, where can ever nerd Ben, where can everybody find you again, find the website, etc.? cetera? Motocampnerd.com. It's got all the, the resources and camping gear you can find for motorcycle camping. And we're located in Archdale, North Carolina. So for those of you in North Carolina, we're right in the center of the state. Um, conveniently located off of I-85, if you know the area. So we actually get a lot of people passing through, come by the store. So 
hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully next year we'll be able to stay open a little bit later in the day. So that way people can come visit us when they get off work and uh, we'll hit more events. Hopefully the next time we're having a conversation, this is just your full-time gig, right? Absolutely. I would love that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Dork, where can everybody find you, sir? Uh, I'm Dork in the Road on ins. Nope, on YouTube and a uh, Dork in the Road on Instagram. Dork in the Road on uh, TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> ben is not wordsing today. No, really um, I am Grace, the Graceful Renegade. You can find me on YouTube and on Instagram under the Graceful Renegade. Uh, and as always, to everyone, live wild and ride free. And do not forget to be excellent to each other. Yeah. Oh, thank Have- you. I thank you very much.